Hello and welcome you all. Dear students, this topic is micro measurement techniques. We will discuss how to measure the different microwave parameters. So first part is measurement of S parameters. Now normally in electrical circuits, uh, Z and Y parameters are used. Z is impedance parameter, Y is admittance parameter. But we know that microwave is having higher frequency, much larger frequency band. So it is difficult to measure current and voltages. That means the Z and Y parameter are not useful. So in case of microwaves, S parameters are used. So everything is expressed in terms of S parameter. Now to measure the S parameter, we have a direct device which is called network analyzer. This uh, diagram shows the uh, arrangement to measure the S parameters. So as I said, this is the micro analyzer which gives measurement of S parameter. This is the bidirectional uh, coupler. So directional coupler we are using. At one end, we have connected micro source. The remaining ports are terminated with the matched load. That means for the remaining uh, ports, matched load is connected. Now, as shown in this diagram, say this is port number M, this is port, this is port number M, this is port number N. So, source is connected to port M. So, AM represents the value of the incident wave, whereas BN represents the reflected wave. Basically, S parameter is the ratio or it is measured in terms of ratio of reflected wave to the incident wave whenever there is a formation of standing wave. We know that if uh, one wave is there moving in forward direction and the wave is getting reflected back, if amplitude of both incident and reflected waves is same, then standing wave pattern is obtained. So we have to measure the ratio of reflected wave BN to the incident wave AM. As I said, the remaining ports which are not used are connected to the match load. Now the S parameter is represented as SMN like S11, S12, S21 and so on. So this is a complex term that means it is having magnitude as well as it is having direction. So using this setup we can measure the S parameters. Next part is measurement of microwave power. From the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this. What are the different methods used to measure the microwave power and explain calorimeter method to measure the microwave power? So there are three different categories that depends on the uh, type of power you want to measure. Basically, there are three types of power. One is low power, then medium power and high power. For the measurement of low power, volumeter and calorimeter are used. Volumeter is the basic technique. The volumeter is having certain fixed resistance. As the heat goes on increasing, the resistance will change and this volumeter is placed in some certain kind of bridge or circuit. We are going to study this calorimeter uh, technique in detail. For measurement of po medium power, calorimeter is used. For measurement of high power, calorimetric watt meter is used. Now this calorimeter uh, measurement technique is applicable for the measurement of power which is in the range 10 watt to 50 kilowatt. The basic concept is if you want to measure the microwave power then the microwave power is converted into heat. That heat is applied to certain fluid then the temperature of that fluid is measured. So this measured temperature of the fluid will be directly proportional to the measurement of microwave power. This is the basic concept. Now to measure the heat, two methods are used. One is direct method. In this case, uh, there will be increase in the temperature of a dissipating medium. This increased temperature of the dissipating medium is measured, which is, which is proportional to the measurement of power. Second is indirect method. In this case, the heat which is developed due to the microwave power is uh, transferred to some another medium and the temperature of that another medium is measured which is again proportional to the measurement of power. Then there are two types of calorimeter. First is static calorimeter and second is circulating calorimeter. In case of static calorimeter, a 50 ohm coaxial cable is used. This coaxial cable is filled with the dielectric load. 
then this dielectric load dissipates the heat dissipates the power which is converted into heat which is measured and it gives the measurement of the microwave power second is circulating as the name indicates in this method the fluid is kept circulating continuously then the microwave power is converted into heat that heat get gets transferred to the fluid so temperature of the fluid increases we just have to measure the temperature of the outlet fluid this temperature of the outlet fluid will be proportional to the micro power so this is the way how the calorimeter is used for the measurement of micro power next part is measurement of phase shift using double minimum method in case of a network if you know the electrical length of that network then phase shift can be directly measured this is the block schematic to make use of double minimum method to measure the phase shift of unknown network so here this block shows the unknown network whose phase shift is to be measured we are using one adjustable phase shifter that means this is the standard device you you can adjust the phase shift of this device at the input side we have shown microwave source the signal coming out from this microwave source is amplitude modulated am means amplitude modulation is amplitude modulation using 1 kilohertz sine wave then this amplitude modulated signal which is output of this micro source is given to h plane t function of h plane t is to split this signal into two parts one part is applied to the upper isolator second part is applied to the lower isolator we have already discussed in earlier videos what is the role of isolator so presently it provides the isolation between the two uh, blocks now the output of upper isolator is applied to the unknown network whose phase shift is to be measured while the output of lower isolator is applied to the adjustable phase shifter these two signals are again combined using h plane t applied to the crystal detector and output of crystal detector is applied to the cro now the basic thing is that we are getting two amplitude modulated waves one is one in the upper part and another in the lower part you have to observe these waveforms on the cro go on adjusting this adjustable phase shifter that means go on adjusting the phase of this lower part signal in such a way that the two sine waves one coming from upper part and another coming from the lower part will be in phase that you have to observe it on the cro so whenever or the point at which these two sine waves amplitude modulated waves one coming from upper part and another from the lower part will be in phase that you you will observe on the cro then we can easily say that whatever phase shift is there which we have adjusted by using this network adjustable phase shifter will be the same phase shift of the unknown network so this is the way how to measure the phase shift of any unknown network next is measurement of quality factor to measure the quality factor different methods are available presently we are talking about the important method that is the transmission method to measure the quality factor this is the corresponding block diagram at one end we are using a microwave source then its output is given to the resistive pad then one cavity resonator is used this is the major device which produces the output in terms of frequency actually we have to plot the graph of output power versus frequency then output of cavity resonator is given to the detector and last block is the power indicator as the name indicates it gives measurement of the power this is the corresponding graph before that we have to go on varying the frequency of this microwave source by keeping the signal level constant that means just change the frequency of this source but keep signal level constant and every time with respect to frequency the output power is measured by using this power indicator then the graph is plotted this is graph of output power in terms of in db measured in db versus frequency this particular point is the 3 db point the measurement at 3 db point is done that means at two sides two points the gap between these two points is measured it is denoted by 2 delta then value of this 2 delta which is called half power band width so this half power band width 2 delta is given by plus or minus 1 by ql where ql is the quality factor with load if everything is ideal 
then we can say QL is same as Q0 where Q0 is the uh, is the value which indicates quality factor without load that is the quality factor of the micro source so this is the way to measure the quality factor of the device next step of measurement is measurement of impedance using ref reflectometer technique so this is the basic block of reflectometer here we have connected forward detector and this is the reverse detector now at this input side we have shown micro source the output of micro source is applied to the resistive pad the function of pad is to control the value of this i mean to control the output of this micro source then this dc indicates directional coupler so we are using two directional coupler one is forward directional coupler this is reverse directional coupler at the output we have connected one load this is the incident power from the load the reflection of power takes place incident power is denoted by pi reflected power is denoted by pr as i said these two are the directional couplers so due to the property of directional coupler this forward and reflected powers will waves will not get mixed up now by making the measurement of incident and reflected power we can calculate the value of reflection coefficient rho which is given as square root of pr upon pi pr is reflected power pi is incident power so from this we can make the measurement of rho that is reflection coefficient once the reflection coefficient is known you can calculate the standing wave ratio s which is given as 1 plus rho upon 1 minus rho then again you can measure the impedance unknown impedance by making use of this formula rho is z minus zg upon z plus zg where zg represents the unknown impedance which you want to measure and z is the known impedance that is impedance connected at the load so using this formula you can make the measurement of the impedance so dear students that's it for this session and that's it for this uh, series of uh, radiation and micro so thank you thanks a lot for watching this series